All right. Hi, this is Stacy Mahoy with StacyMahoy.com, and today I have a special guest with me, um, Coach T, Stephanie Thompson. And she, um, I actually met her through the Fast Pitch Inspired group on um, Facebook because she had commented or left a message on um, one of my posts. I was going to be doing a free training for coaches, and she asked to be notified when that was up and running. So I shot her a message, and I just told her, I got you down. Um, thanks so much for, you know, being in the group. And she had mentioned to me that she coaches a team and she's had over the last five years pretty much all of her players go on to sign with colleges and that kind of caught my attention because that's pretty that's a pretty high success rate there and so I asked her a few questions and she also mentioned that um, her some of her players will sign with junior colleges you know it's not just you know all division one opportunities and that was in interesting to me as well because I had just come off some other conversations earlier in the week where there was a lot of frustration expressed by coaches, by um, people helping with the recruiting process, and even by college coaches about parents or families who pretty much don't want to look at anything except for Division I. And they're not open to anything. In fact, they even trash talk other opportunities. And so it was interesting to me that she had been able to help her families even take advantage of all of the op opportunities available versus being really narrow, you know, having kind of a narrow vision and not being as open. So that's when I asked him, like, would you like to get on an interview with me and kind of talk about some of these things? Because I'm sure you're doing some really key, important things that just about anyone can use and just make their college ex uh, recruiting experience a lot better whether you're a family going through it or if you're a coach that coaches at this level or you're going to be um, I'm sure she's going to share some really interesting and useful ideas that you can use to help your players and your athletes so welcome Stephanie thank you so much for doing this I know you're super busy so I appreciate your time and your willingness to be here to share with us thanks coach yeah we're uh, I'm excited to tell them too because I know that people do get lost in the the experience of going to college and going to play ball and they have this big dream and they they think that they're going to buy into this one thing and they get something else and they're frustrated sometimes it's just a lack of um because nobody's done it before them they haven't been in contact with somebody who's done it before so they what they think is going to happen and what happens two different things yeah two, I, I I, I have seen that firsthand too with players going on to college. And so, so Stephanie, before um, we dive into those questions, um, for those of you who don't know Stephanie, she's, um, she runs Blitz Dugout in Illinois, which is a sports instruction center. And she also coaches, obviously, softball teams. So that's pretty much where she's coming from. And I wanted to talk with her as well because I just wanted people to know that even if you're not, um, you know, you don't have to be, some really expensive travel team or you don't have to necessarily go to all the super huge tournaments. I mean, if you can't do those things, especially what she's going to share is super important because if you don't have those resources in place or maybe you don't have all those bells and whistles attached to your program or the team that you have um, that you're on doesn't do all of that, what she's going to share is super important because it allows you to take some proactive steps to help yourself out or to kind of make the most of what you have. So um, the first question I had for Stephanie was, what in her, um, in her opinion, like what were some of the things that contribute to her high rate of success as far as helping so many of her athletes move on and receive offers to the college level? Um, the first and foremost is the, the athlete. They, you either can play or you can't, can't, and you either have an attitude to be coached or you don't. So when you go into play sports in high school level, at a high school level, you're looking to play uh, uh, smart and hard. A lot of athletes that can throw hard and, and get it from third to first, um, their attitude is horrible, though. And you have to think in, in the big picture. I get to play this long as a girl. You know, I, I start in t-ball, and I'm going to go to college, and I'm going to be done. So when I get to the college level, there's a whole bunch of girls that have that same dream. And if a coach has 20 girls to pick from, you have to stand out. You have to stand out. You might be athletically inclined as, I don't know, 15, let's say 50% of that 20, you all are at the same level of play. Now what sets you apart? So when they make that call, the first call that they make to your coach, to your high school coach, I, I've talked to the coach a thousand times and they've called me about our girls. And, and um, the first question is, 
How do they behave? Um, are they coachable? Not a, they already know your GPA. They already know your, your profile for your uh, play. They want to know how you behave. Because if I get to pick from 10 girls or 20 girls for the same position, I don't want to deal with you for nine months if, I, if you're not coachable if you're gonna cause upset to the team. You know, when you come in new, you have to have that same mentality as the team. So a lot of time it's gonna be attitude. The thing they can do that's gonna help themselves the most is be realistic. Don't, um, we go to college, I think you were touching on this, go to college show tournaments. Like if your team, your travel team or your school team goes to some big tournament where there's a lot of uh, exposure, usually they're called exposure tournaments. Like we go to SEMO, which is the Missouri, uh, South, Southern Missouri College. We could go to some St. Louis things, which is a couple hours from here. We go to some St. Louis shows where a lot of coaches convene, college coaches. When they show up at those, you got to remember that college coach has 10 fields to cover. They're only looking for a pitcher and a catcher or a pitcher and a left fielder. And so they're going to spend half, half of the inning at your, at your field. They're really not going to see you play. So what you really want is a profile. You want to keep your profile. You want to be responsible for your profile, what it looks like. Um, and then you want to make connection with them. Um, that's not your coach's job. That's your job. So my, me as a coach, I make sure that player has that profile filled out, but then I kind of put it on them. It's on you. You're going to make some contacts. I teach them how to do that. We teach parents how to do that. You're going to, um, you're going to send that in. You're going to have a crisp picture on there with the same uniform on over and over and over so that when they see you, in real life um, at a tournament and you pass them, they might be like, oh, seen that, seen that before, seen that jersey before. Yeah. Um, you're gonna do things to get their attention so they don't automatically write you off. Um, you're gonna know their players. If they're, um, if you're looking at a program and you wanna, and you're the left fielder and you're a slapper, you wanna make sure you know that there's seniors that are going out that you could take their spot. That, you, that there's a place for you at that school on that system. If you don't know their teams while you're going in, you can't help yourself. If they don't need a right fielder, if they don't need a center fielder, if they don't need a pitcher, um, you probably don't have a chance there. You know, you need to set yourself up to know their program um, when you look at schools to go to. So once you know as a player what you're looking for, then me as a coach, I can help plug you in. Um, that's you got to help yourself a lot. Don't depend on your high school coach to do it. Don't depend on your travel coach to do it. Um, you can get guidance from them, but really it's on you and your mom and dad um, to get these things together. The profile is probably the biggest help to yourself. You can take that to tournaments. You can ask your coach. A lot of times at our uh, college show tournaments, as a coach, we take our profiles and we hang them on the fence in the dugout. So if a college coach comes up, usually they're, they have something on saying that's the, the, what school they're from. So when you see that, and you see somebody standing by to pay attention, um, if you have profiles hanging on your fence, just on a clipboard, and you want them to be really um, uh, bold letters at the top with your name and your position. So if I'm looking for a pitcher, and I'm from, um, let's say, our local college, our local junior college is Rin Lake. I'm from Rin Lake College, and I'm out scouting, and I like this pitcher. When I look up through these profiles, it'll say so-and-so, their name, and their position. So I'm looking for a picture. I go through, I see the picture, I pull her out. She has a picture of herself and her position. Pull her profile out. I don't have to read it right now. I liked her. I can take it with me. I can go back to my office and contact her because it has all of her information on it. If I wanted to come to a camp, if I really liked her, that same profile is a thing that you're going to use to send to them. You know, you're going to send them your information. Um, a lot of times, Kids make videos. They have the video of their self showing their skills off. But the profile is going to be the first thing they see because they're looking as a coach. They're going to look at your grade average. They're going to look at your GPA. They're going to look at your attendance. They're going to see um, who you played for, how much experience you got. That's going to be your first cut. They don't want to watch a video until they know that you academically are going to bring your team up too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things you can do to help yourself. Perfect. So a couple of things that you touched upon that I just want to also highlight. Um, you talked about your attitude and everything because I, I recently heard someone just talk about how like at the higher levels, there's really no shortage of talent. There's so much talent, but when it comes down to who actually makes it there and stays, right? Not just making it there, but actually sticks around and becomes a contributing member of the team and so on. It's those, it's those athletes that can handle the emotional, 
and um, the mental pressure and just challenges that are sure to come, right? Because playing at a high level and being able to do so consistently and take on, you know, all the different challenges and adversity that come your way, like that's a whole nother thing. Physical skills, that's a lot of people have them where you can develop that pretty easily. Um, yep. But to really like get there and last is a whole nother thing. So really working on, you know, your attitude during any, you know, ups and downs throughout your seasons now is, is a great opportunity to practice that um, stability and that emotional, you know, that's, yep. a, that's a skill. To me, that's a skill that needs to be developed. Like, just like any other Yeah, I say to my, we say to our players, or I say them to them all the time, talk to yourself like you're your friend. Like your friend wouldn't say, oh my God, why are you on my team? You're, ho you're horrible. I wish you wasn't here. And that's what you're saying to yourself. The pitcher, the catcher, the first base, third base makes an error. And then they wear that error for the next inning or up to bat instead of going, okay, I can do this. What's wrong with me? Let's go. Clean it up. Let's go. That's what your, co that's what your coach is saying. That's what your friends are saying. But you refuse that to yourself. Mm. You refuse to tell yourself, I can do this. What's wrong with me? Let's go. Instead, you go, oh my God, I'm horrible. I can't believe, you know, everybody's mad at me. No, they're not. Shut up. Shut up. That's what I literally say that to my kids. I go, shut it, knock it off. Can you do this? They go, yeah, then get it done. And then they look at me like, okay, sorry. And the truth is, I'm, I mean that. Can you do it? Yeah, I can do it. Then do it. Like, um, I think my, the best example of this is we had a coach, warm-ups, we're at her college playing on her field, and it's a travel team, but she's hosting a tournament. Before the game started, we have some team leaders. They're not necessarily captains, just leaders. And we say – go warm up. So I charge those leaders to be the mouth, be the leader. Don't let people, you, they want you to be better. Make them better. Don't let them, if we say hi knee, everybody's hi knee. We say lunge, everybody lunge. And if somebody's not doing it, get on them. So we have this girl, she's barking out the orders, you know, right over left, left over right. They're counting down, been touch your toes. And she keeps saying, work hard, not, hey, stretch your legs out. We're going, we want you to run. Let's go. She's on them. Literally, the coach walks up to me and says, hey, coach, uh, number 13 out here, I need to talk to her and her parents after the game. And I was like, what? So she got an offer to play two years for free, full ride, because she was a leader in warm-ups. I didn't see her play. But I, she knew. She knew. She said, I could tell. I could tell she was going to be the worker. She was going to be the one I want. That if she's sitting on the bench, she's going to be on the fence. She's going to be yelling for the team. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's work hard. Mm -hmm. She's not one of the quitters. She's not, she's mentally tough, obvious, because she looked at her other peers and said, let's go, let's go, do it. Talk them into it. She said, I need that on my team. Sometimes you're right. It's not about uh, your game. There's mm -hmm. a ton of kids that can play. They're going to keep up with you. They're going to work hard. It's going to be about your attitude. It's going to be about something that makes you stand out. Um, the other thing that you had said was um, the coach, when the coach uh, does give you that opportunity to be the leader, to not get mentally down, to see that the way you work on that, the way you work on mental toughness isn't at the game and it's not even a practice. Mm -hmm. It's at home. Mm -hmm. When your mom says, get your room clean, you can't leave. Keep your mouth shut, walk in your room and get it done. That's mental toughness. When you have that thing inside of you that, that wants to mouth off or wants to run, run free, you got to harness it and do what you're told. When you get good at that, you're going to not only succeed on the field, you're going to succeed in life. So my girls, literally, I tell them the first, if I hear you yell at your parents, you're going to run till you puke. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear you talking back to the parents. I don't want to hear you talking back to the umpires. I don't want you talking back to me. You're here because I'm on your side. Do what I tell you to do. Sometimes you see those girls go, okay. And then there's other times where these girls uh, get it. They get it. They're like, okay, she's shaping me. She get me ready mentally to you might look at the pitcher and say, go play second. And she says, I don't play second. You go, you're right. Sit down. And you look at the catcher and go, go play second. And the catcher goes, oh gosh, okay, let me get my glove. Well, because she's like, oh gosh, I don't want to be set out. Well, the deal is, can you stop a ball? Yeah. Can you catch a pop fly? Yeah. Go play second. Mm -hmm. I know that you're going to make errors because you're not a second baseman, mm -hmm. but if you're mentally tough enough to fill the ball and catch the ball and throw the ball and you can override that thing, I'm not a second baseman. I want you on my team because somebody gets hurt. I need somebody to step in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I know that everybody talks about the big game where the DH came in. She hits the home run and wins the game. She hadn't played the whole series. That's the girls that are mentally tough. She stayed in the game the whole time. That's the ones the coaches need. That's how you be 
become. That's how you grow. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I mean, there's so much good stuff that you said right there. And I know that college coaches are looking at that too. When they're out recruiting, it's like, don't freak out because you made a mistake and be like, oh my gosh, it's over. It's like, no, they actually want to see how you respond. So yes. you have a tremendous opportunity to like fill your brownie points, if you make an, a mistake, and then you're able to come back from like, they want to see what happened. Yeah, they see you cover. Yeah, how exactly. fast. Yeah. yeah. So don't freak out like that. If you make a mistake and there's scouts all around, it's like, okay, this is actually a really good opportunity for me to like show what I can do. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Then I have game face that yeah. even if I'm freaking out on the inside, nobody's going to know, but me, and I'm going to make it work for me. Yeah. Work a little harder. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. And so the other thing you touched upon was like knowing the schools and what they need and what, what, and so on and so forth, because a lot of people, they're just like, I want to go to this school. I want to play for this program, have no idea what that coach needs or what they're looking for. And sometimes it's just timing. It's not even personal. Like, Oh, we don't need you. We don't want you. It's like, we don't need another shortstop right now. We have like five of those. And yeah. And everybody wants to be a shortstop. It's like, you know, shortstops are like a dime a dozen, like, right. Right. A really good right fielder, a really good first baseman is really hard yeah. to come by. Or somebody, like you yeah. said, that will just pick up their glove and go play wherever. They're yeah. Always looking for, yeah, they're always looking for athletes, utility players that are going to be able to like, fill in different spots. And so even as, as a high school coach or a club coach, when you look into the dugout, like you need someone to go do something, you look into the dugout and people are like, turn, turn away. They're like not even ready for the opportunity. It's like, come on. Right. What a player yeah. Yeah, literally, we have our girls when you fi- when you fill out your profile you name where you where your favorite places are to play or where you do it best but you say somewhere you say I'll play wherever you put me I'm utility so the the chances are that you're going to get looked at, at you know if there's a second step or a third step that first tryout if I'm looking at your page and all you do is play third I probably don't need you because I'm not, I have two or three other girls. Like you said, I have a dime a dozen to play that position. I can pick anybody, but if you can play third and you can catch, Ooh, now, now you're double time for me. And my money as a, as a college coach, my money needs to be spent well. So I need to make sure that my third baseman that can double as my catcher or my third baseman that plays first base also, or my pitcher that plays center field, um, uh, that's priceless. You have to have another position and you have to be willing to do what you're told. Mm-hmm. I've, I don't know how many times I've told girls, do not say I don't play infield. Mm-hmm. Do not say I'm not an outfielder. That's not an option. So what you say is I am the best. I'm at my best on third base and I'm at my best. My second position that I'm at best is shortstop or catch, but you put me where you want me. I can make play. That makes you opened up to not sit the bench as much. It also makes you beat the next person that says, I only play third. Mm -hmm. So one thing I wanted to touch upon there, um, I know at the high school level, sometimes I've met players who are like, "Uh, all my coaches ever let me do is catch and I want to play other positions and I want to do this, which is great. Um, But at the same time, if you have, like, instead of complaining about it all the time, if you have any opportunity whatsoever to feel the ball in practice or to you know, an infield type of throw, like use every single rep that you are given to work on that instead of complaining about that you don't get to do this or that, like work so that if you do ever get that opportunity, you're ready. And you can also always take some extra like grounders on the side or whatever, like you can prepare yourself too, that even if your coach generally tends to only put you in the catcher spot when you're working position, whatever in practice, you can take it upon yourself to get a few extra reps here and there so that you're prepared to do other things just in case, you know, they might need you at catcher for four years in high school, but after that you might need to know some other stuff. So right, that's, something, right. that's something that you can do too. And then I had yeah, to you practice. earn your spot at practice. Yeah. Right. You exactly. Have to earn practice. Exactly. So if, if um, somebody's taking extra hitting, Hey, can I, Hey coach, can I stay and hit? Can you feed me another bucket? Then you say, I'll stay in field. You, you go, you go stop all those and you get in that position that you want to be in that, you know, to show that coach, Hey, look, I can do this too. You're right that you earn that position. I mean, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of parents say, my daughter's a first baseman. She doesn't even get a chance to play first in a game. And I, and I say to them, I'm the mean coach. I'm the one that says it to the, to the parent. They usually are stifled a little bit, but um, it's just the truth. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you the truth about your child so that we, we're not a, uh, 
on this pretend ride where you have this kid that's a great athlete. You have a kid that needs to work. Some kids are gifted and some kids work. And um, if I can get 10 players at work, perfect. You know, I don't need 10 all-stars. I need 10 workers. So when that athlete thinks they should play first or thinks they should be shortstop or whatever, what I say to them is, um, your daughter hasn't played first base in a game because she didn't prove to me at practice that she's my best bet there. Mm -hmm. So if she can prove to me at practice that she's going to beat who I put there, you, she's going to get her shot, but she's not going to get a chance at a game. Mm -hmm. She had a chance at practice. So um, if your coach needs somebody to catch in, catch in. That's a first base skill. Yeah. You're catching it. Everybody's throwing to you. That's a first base skill. If your coach needs you, uh, needs somebody to um, back up the pitcher, uh, I need you to go. Um, somebody's um, out, out in the outfield. They usually go warm up like in the third inning. They want to pull another pitcher in. Hey, I need you to go to protect her. Go protect her. Go out there with your glove and protect her. Um, do a good job. Stay clued, stay into the game. Know where the ball's at. Make sure you got your, your uh, pitcher covered. The more he can trust you with little stuff, picking up equipment, huge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give a kid more chances that picks up the equipment than I am the kid that walks off with their equipment or tells their parents to carry it because that kid wants it. That kid wants it. I'm going to trust you more. Just on the inside, I'm going to trust you more. Mm -hmm. It isn't even really a choice sometimes. It's just who you look at and go, hey, grab that and go ahead and go out there. Okay, coach. When you know that that kind of trust, when they're working for you before they're asked, those are the kids that get more, more chances. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's one thing I, I recently wrote about and shared again was like people are complaining like, I never get opportunities for this and that and the other things. Like you, what you don't understand is, don't wait for it to be given to you. You got to go out and earn your opportunities. Yeah. Some, some players in practice, like you said, they're burning their opportunities. They're not, oh, I don't get to play first. So then they're in another position. They're like half, you know, half trying and not even into it. It's like, I don't really want to be here. It's like, well, you're not going to get the other chance to go somewhere else. You're earning right, right. with everything you do. So, you know, parents sometimes set them down too. And this makes me frustrated. And I give the speech at the first of the year and I say this to my parents because I think it's huge. Like if there's nothing else anybody ever learns, this is huge. Don't get in the car after a game with your complaining player, with your athlete that says, I didn't get a chance again. I didn't. And then the parent says, I know, I cannot believe that coach didn't do. No, that you're killing that parent. You're killing that athlete. That parent needs to say, you need to work harder practice. Even if you believe that, that your kid didn't get a fair shake, mm -hmm. you still need to say, work it out of practice. Go to practice, let's work harder. That's going to create an athlete instead of dumb them down. You know, when I feel like, when somebody feels like they're being shortchanged, um, they're not going to go work as hard. Mm -hmm. But if you feel like, uh, if your parents, if your parent, your biggest cheerleader says, work harder at practice, that mentality, that mental toughness of, okay, I didn't get this time, but I could get it next time, huge. You yeah. get in the car and your parent says, I cannot believe that your coach didn't give you a chance. Then chip on your shoulder, go to practice, not working as hard, mad already before you get there. I know I'm not going to get a chance. Attitude shuts everything down. Yeah. And I think it's still, like, I will – listen to my child and kind of like, look, I understand it's frustrating, you know, because I see, I see what you're doing and I, I know you're capable and I see you working hard, but just keep going. Just keep yeah, going. Don't, it's going to pay off. They won't, you know? Yeah. They won't be your last coach either. Yeah. So remind yourself, I might play on this team for four years for high school and I might not like the high school coach, but if I quit, I have no chance to go on. Mm -hmm. And if I quit, <laughs> I say this rudely again, I'm the mean coach again. I say things like, Oh, Go to practice, and if he, he's not going to play you, you're going to sit the bench, that's fine. Tell him thank you every day for letting you go five days a week for two hours and get better. Mm -hmm. go, go tell him thank you because you are going – if he's going to hit you 20 infield uh, ground balls, take them. If he wants you to throw long, play long ball, go. And tell him thank you at the end, even if you're sitting the bench, because he's preparing you for your next team. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. attitude. And, and I have players who like will come and be like, I don't know, like, I feel like none of my hard work is paying off, you know, like, I'm not and I'm thinking to myself, well, how are you expecting it to pay off? The only way it can pay off is in playing time, you know, you're missing out on so much, like your hard work always, always, always pays off in some way, shape or form. Always. Perhaps not always. right now in the exact way you want. But the fact that right. you're like, having this attitude right now just shows me well, when you get into the game and you think something's unfair, what are you going to do? Complain about it? 
You know, that's right. not what I need. You, you're not, not even my- able to handle the ups and downs off the prep out of yeah. out of starting well out of the actual playing time why yeah. am i going to put you on the field there's going to be yeah, so much more pressure there's going to be so much more going on you make a mistake everybody's upset like in that moment expressing yeah. Yeah. what are you going to do oh well it was so unfair because this is i don't need that so no, the, no. Sheer, the sheer yeah. fact that you're coming to express all this stuff and complain about the situation instead of asking like okay so yeah. what do, you know what do i need to do or i'm just going to keep I mean, there's this whole mentality that you're exposing and, and showing. Yeah. When that somebody owes you something. Right. Yeah. Okay. Instead of what do I need to do to work harder? What can I do to earn that position? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times uh, athletes will come to me and say, hey, don't you know on my last team, I played first base. And I say, oh, well, that's awesome. I haven't seen you play first base, so we'll have to pr- practice that. Well, I'll have to watch you, you know, next practice or whatever. Or after, the, after this practice, let me know and I'll throw it to you. We'll look at you. Okay, thank you. And then they go, do you think I'll ever play there? I'm not sure. You have to beat, you have to beat her. You have to, I have to think, not you and not your mom and not your dad. I have to think you beat her. I have to think that I need you more there than where I have you. Exactly. Now I'm, I'm a big believer. If I'm, if you make my team, you're playing. Mm-hmm. You're not sitting the bitch all the time. If you are good enough to make my team, then you should be good enough to play on my team. I don't like when schools or coaches um, take on too many kids. And then a lot of kids sit the bench all the time. If I make the team, I need to play in time. But at the same time, uh, I think we take it for granted, or we think, or we talk to ourselves into thinking, I can do that. I worked hard. I'm, I'm as good as her. Mm-hmm. I never talk to an athlete about another athlete. Right. So don't come to me and ask me why. Why is Susie playing and I'm not playing? They're not, let's talk about why you're not playing. You're not playing because you showed up for practice late, mm-hmm. because you left early, because you didn't bring your equipment, because you're constantly having to chase down something, then borrow something. I, you don't get that chance. Mm-hmm. You, you know, that girl that comes prepared that you think that you're beating all the time, you're wearing me out. You got to get your stuff here. You got to. <laughs> you got to have your cleats on when it's time to start and they when you get that together we'll talk and they're like sometimes yeah. you're devastated the truth is you're preparing them. you can't go to work 20 minutes late every day and keep that job so don't come in 20 minutes late to practice and you have to pull somebody else to go play catch with mm-hmm. before you can even enter the practice don't get upset with me when you didn't start yeah and they're like okay sorry coach yeah most of the time the change is really quick and then their game comes up because they've had more practice time. They're more focused. They are working. I say to them all the time, beat her. Don't let her beat you. And, and I'm talking to the second string. I'm talk, not talking to the girl that does it with ease. I'm saying it to a girl that I know is working her butt off and not making it. I say, beat her. Don't let her beat you. And they look at me like, I'm trying and do it. <laughs> because once they get that mentality, though, of I could beat her, they're unstoppable. Yeah. And on top of that, too, it's like even, you know, they're going to be ready when the opportunity presents itself, because a lot of times it will. And so, right. oh, yeah. so yeah, and and like you said, in, with the coaches, a lot of times it's not necessarily about, oh, we have something to this. It's not necessarily about who the very best first baseman is, but like if you have one that can play first well enough and then the other person is solid at third and better than anyone else, okay, right. well, we're gonna need that combination versus putting you like, we wanna play first, but if I put you there, who's gonna play third? We're gonna have a hole in our defense. Absolutely. So yeah. there's more about going, what's going on than you. And if you can really yeah. take the bigger picture in and not be just concerned about your own self and what you want and really yeah. be a team player, that's going to be beneficial for you. Mm-hmm. It's going to be beneficial for the team. It's going to be beneficial for your options down the road. So, oh, yeah. 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 So when it comes to parents and things they need to know in this process, what do you think are some of the really important, critical concepts and ideas that parents need to know during this journey there's some big points um a lot of people think for your division one that's where i gotta go i have this wish list of of colleges the truth is um at a four-year college you have promised money their freshman year so that money is continued to be promised if they sign that four-year promise for the next four years so let's say a coach has fifty thousand dollars which is um they they have more than that but just for a number fifty thousand dollars and he gives a pitcher 10,000 a year for the next four years. Well, that's next year he has 40,000 to start with. He's already gave 10,000 away. So um, that's a four year college. When you go to a four year college, you're probably not gonna get a free ride. Yeah. You're gonna get some money 
if you're lucky, towards something and you're gonna need FAFSA and you're gonna need your um, uh, scholarships from other things or things that you've won, you're gonna need those and you're still gonna have a bill. Mm -hmm. At the JUCO level, if you go to JUCO, which everybody thinks is horrible, the truth is JUCO schools feed into a four-year. They have a feeder, they're a feeder school. They are connected with some four-year program. So what you want to know is if, if that JUCO school can offer me two years for free because they have a turnover rate of one year. So all their seniors, all their second years go. All that money goes back in. They don't have four years to wait for that 10000 to come back to them. So I can promise more money quicker at a turnover rate. So if I gave six girls free rides this year and six girls leave next year that had free rides, I can give six more. So at the JUCO level, they're going to give you books, tuition, uh, room and board, if their school has room and has a, a place for that. Um, they're going to give uh, meal tickets on game days. So when you go into that school, you're going to get two years of the same degree, of the same, you're going to get all the same credits because they have to feed into the other school. So you're going to have the same level of, uh, of education and you're gonna get two years of a lot of playing time. If I'm on a, a four-year team, I might have two years where I sit. I might sit a lot because they're gonna keep their juniors and seniors who now have worked through their program. They played as, as freshmen. A lot of times they'll even come in from the JUCO schools and beat out their the players because if I wait two years to play a game, I look like a freshman, I'm a junior. But if I'm, if I'm a freshman at a JUCO school and I've played, I've pitched, I don't know, 50 games, then when I go into my next season, if I transfer up, I'm, I'm prepared. I've already had all that pressure. I've already done all this. There's a lot of Division I JUCO that is good. Mm -hmm. They might even better, be better than some four-year. Um, they're good. They play high competition. They have some great um, uh, excursions. Their travel is a lot different than the four-year. Um, they, have, they have some of the best fields because they really, because they have money, they have money. They don't have to wait four years to come back in. They also, a lot of times at the JUCO, you can get to know that coach um, because you go to his camps. You can go to their, their uh, games because they're local. You, he can go know you by name. You can mention your team, like my Blitz team, we have nine teams, 18, 16, 14s, 12s, 10s, and eights. So the name Blitz, um, most of the coaches, associate with us with me or with coach Pearsall 18 years so when we um when they say I play on this team at these JUCO schools around us all of our JUCO schools know who our girls are so that's that's in your favor so then they know that you've worked through a program of high standards of good behavior of what the coaching's like so then they they might pay more attention to your profile just out of um your local plus there's you know the school itself wants local kids. They, they want the locals um, to come in and use their facility. So they're also more apt to give you more money, more time, more, more attention. Um, a lot of times your JUCOs aren't pulling in from everywhere. So you have, again, local competition. You probably played against them in high school. They were probably the, the uh, pitcher that you're like, oh my gosh, you know who we're playing today? She's now on your team. So um, that's exciting for the girls locally. Plus, it's a great way to um, stay close to your family. If there's a lot of times families, um, single parents, um, sometimes divorced parents, where there's going to be an issue with paying for college, you literally go for two years for free, for free. Then when you feed into that other college, now you have, if you're feeding into the college that comes out of that school, now you have that coach who is definitely in contact with your feeder coach mm -hmm. and can push you right through. Um, that's huge. Like our Frontier College literally set their whole uh, system up so the nurses could play softball. They set their whole curriculum up so that nursing, the nurses, who went, whoever wanted to go for the nursing classes or the uh, science classes, could um, do their um, softball schedule without missing any of time in their class that they couldn't miss, they wasn't allowed to miss. And I kind of laughed and said, you set the whole program up over that? And they said, why would we not want pre-med students? I mean, they're going to be, their GPA is going to be great. They're, they're focused. They're great students. The problem is um, they can't go to their, uh, you know, they have a lot of time where they have to go to the hospital. And they can't miss that time because you can't make it up. So anytime that you have a nurse, um, she's went to school. She quit everything. A lot of them quit everything because they can't 
we have a junior college. That's all they do. They, they take care of all these softball girls. They were the number eight in the nation for GPA for a team. And they have a bunch of smart girls, great athletes, but they thought they were going to give up their dream. And here's this Juco college that allows them to play two more years, which is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. And I think um, a lot of people don't know, even in my experience, there's, there's some Juco colleges, like you were saying, that are super competitive. And because they're feeders, they have all these supports in place to make sure your academics are on point, to make sure you have all the credits that you need, to make sure you stay on track so that they can feed you into the, the division they, program or whatever it is. Absolutely. They want to push you to their school. I mean, that's why you're connected. So they want you to push you into their school. And if you're a great athlete and a great academically, you're in. That's the, that's the whole idea from the beginning. So it, you don't have to set up any um, um, new relationships or really work out hard. You ha what you have to do is do well for two years and right. get some great play. Yep. Yeah. So what about um, – as far as players are concerned, right? We all know like you gotta work hard on the field, get the best grades you can get. What else would you say to them as far as like, I mean, besides what you've already talked about attitude and stuff like that, are there any other like little things um, aside from like, okay, they got their profile done, they've got their working on their attitude and all that. Um, is there anything else besides like making those connections and actually reaching out that you would add to that list? It's going to be about um, don't get so narrow-minded that you only want two schools. I'm only doing these two schools. You have to open up. You have to look at their – you have to know their programs and all those things. The thing that's going to make you set apart, though, is how much con contact you have with the coach. There are rules set in place so the college coaches cannot talk to you. I mean, they're not even supposed to speak to you. So if they come to a tournament and it's on a downtime, they're not allowed to talk to you. So you might say, hi, Coach Thompson, and I might walk past you. If I'm out there um, looking or doing any kind of um, help with another coach for scouting, I can't talk to you. So I might pass you, mm -hmm, nod, and keep going because you can't break those rules. You don't want to break those rules. And then when you – but you can send me a letter anytime. You can email me anytime. Now, I might not be able to respond right now, but you can send it to me. So I encourage my players to make their profile every year. Um, they, they start out with, hello, coach, I'm so-and-so from my school. This is my profile. I was wondering if you have any uh, camp, open camps. Do you have any camp dates? And then you'll get something back from the secretary, a letter that says, thank you for your interest, and here's our dates. Then I'm going to send them also on my profile. You want, you want your profile to be pretty um, up-to-date. You never send an old one. They'll send last year's. And then you're going to put your games down. Pick out the important games. Pick out a tournament. So that they could come, three, there's three days. They don't have just one, two-hour window to see you. Um, put those down at the bottom. If you're going to play some um, ASA tournaments or, you know, some type of um, tournament that's a big in your area, tell that coach. Let them show up. Let them see who you are. Every year, um, and then you, when you contact them, you're going to get something back. Um, the other thing that's, that helps that player the most is you have to remember, they don't want to talk to your mom and dad anymore. They want to talk to you. Now, I know that sounds scary and, and weird, but when you're 16, you're talking to the coach. When you see them, say hi. When, you, when, you, um, uh, when they address you, they're going to want your parents' phone number. They're going to want your email. They're going to want your phone number. They're going to want to talk to you. Um, at 18, when you go to college, no longer do your parents get to walk in the college and say, uh, I need my daughter's grades. They don't get to do that anymore. You have to sign a waiver as, you know, to go, when you go to college, you have to allow your parents to know about your stuff. Well, that coach is trying to start that relationship. And so you want to be able to speak to them, ask questions. Um, you might want mom sitting next to you when you type these questions out so she can give you a little headway and she can say, Matt, don't ask that. Ask it like this. But at the same time, when you answer, if they send you questions to answer, you want somebody sitting there so you get great intelligent answers, but you want it to come from you. You want to make sure you make the contact, uh, almost like a like make make sure they know it's a privilege mm -hmm. that they feel privileged to talk to you, that you uh, appreciate their time and their effort. Um, not like they owe you anything. They'll look right past you, and don't make mom and dad do it because then you look like you can't handle the team. Yeah, that's you, that's a lot of um, a lot of times they'll they'll you're file thirteen if if I have to deal with mom and dad all the time. Yeah, they're not. I doing think, it. Um, what you said is true. Like a lot of 
especially freshmen, sophomores, they're kind of intimidated having to do the talking themselves and whatnot. <laughs> so one tip that I heard was like, go and contact some junior college or some small college that's somewhere maybe out of your really, you know, right. your, where you really want to go. Like go talk to someone that you really don't care if they like you or not. <laughs> and right. practice. Right. Work it out. Absolutely. Yeah, pick up the phone, send an email and just and get that out of the way so you have some under your belt before you actually talk to people that you really care about, like how right. it's gonna go. Right. And so. if you have a JUCO that has offered you, even if it's out of your realm, even if it's not really where you want to go, that's leverage. Yes. That's leverage to the colleges that you do talk to. If you have a four year that's offered you some, um, we'll pay your books. We'll we'll give you housing. We will uh, pay half of your tuition. You can use that in, an, in the next letter you write. You want to flip that over and say, I'm really interested in your program. I really want to be a warrior. I really want to, you know, wear your team name. Um, I've talked to so-and-so college. And they've offered me this. Do you, you have a better offer? That's, that's how you're going to use those things when you talk to those coaches. Mm -hmm. And they say, what do they offer you? And you go, well, they're going to pay my books and give me housing. And that coach might say, you know, uh, we have housing. You could, we can get you in the housing and, and your books could be paid for it. We could pay half of your tuition and you go, okay, well, let me talk to my parents about that. You know, don't answer right then. Give yourself some time. Make sure you're making the right a decision on where you're going. Make sure they fit into your curriculum. Don't just go there because you want to play ball. Make sure your curriculum that you're not wasting your next four years because you went to play ball. Go make sure you, when you're done playing ball that you have a job and you have a great degree and that you've worked it out in your favor. Um, that's, you can use those leverage though when somebody offers you anything, anything, then the next coach that wants you will offer you that and some. Yeah. Yeah. And also when you're making your first contact, don't just make it all about you and what you want. So don't like, you know, right. send them an email or whatever and be like, Oh, I'm this, you know, do you have money for me? It's like, Whoa, that, that is uh, you <laughs> so. yeah, it's never about you. It's always about their school. Yeah. You want to say how well you think you fit into the program mm -hmm. and how that their program is run well. And you see all the things they do and you uh, want to be a part of this, and you, yeah, you want to um, fit in. You want to fit in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely important like to bring it to them. Yeah, to know a little bit about their school so that it shows that you've done some research, you know, like, I want to study this. I'm looking at yeah. possibly studying this at your school. You know, what are some of your, do you have requirements as far as incoming freshmen are concerned that are different than maybe what, you know, the NCAA requires or what have you, and just kind of ask me, like, what do you need? What would you need from me? Do you have any camps coming up that I can kind of get to know um, your program even better so that we can see if it's a good fit? I mean, just kind of, you know, not just bombarding them with like, oh, I do this and just really, if you can make it about them and what, you know, asking them what they need or showing, you know, some interest in their program and what um, you could do for them, if anything. Right then, you know, you're going to probably have a lot better chance than if you email and be like, oh, I'm an outfielder in this class and you have money right. to give me because right. I want to play yeah. softball. Like, <laughs> right. We're going to be like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, want, you want to uh, engage them as uh, because you need their program. Mm -hmm. I need your program. I would fit into your program. I, I want the degree that your school offers. Mm -hmm. I fall into the right categories of um, what you're needing again, knowing their team, mm -hmm. that they have five pitchers. I'm not a pitcher, I'm a catcher, but you only have two. You have one graduating. Mm -hmm. That makes you, you know, I fit in your program. Um, I see that, you might even want to mention that. I see that that you have somebody leaving and that's the position I play. Is there a camp I can attend? Things like that. That's where your big, um, your big marks are going to be made. When you go to one of the camps, this is what you want to do. You want to go to their camps. You want to work out at that camp. You want to bust a move at the camp. Um, but what you really want to do is, speak to that coach every time you pass them. And if you can hook up with one of those players, uh, Facebook, um, maybe a, a phone number exchange or something like that, then you have, uh, you can ask about that program more on a personal level and get to know, like if you're gonna go to Kaskaskia College around here, you're gonna run. You're gonna run and you're gonna run and you're gonna run. She has a great, uh, Coach uh, Trial has a great uh, attitude about agility. She wants you physically fit. She wants you working it out. She wants you, I mean, if you're the pitcher, you're going to be just as strong as the catcher. And if you're the catcher, you're going to be just as strong as center field. So, but a lot of girls, she owns you once you sign with her. And they don't realize that. They get there like, ha. Huh. And then some other colleges, they teach linear. Like the batting is all linear or the batting is all rotational. 
and they have a girl go in there and she's like, I don't do that. Well, you do now. You do it now. So if you go to their camps, you'll know what she, what that coach is about and whether or not you fit with that coach, whether or not you go, I don't want to run. I don't want, I'm not a runner. I'm not a sprinter or I'm, I don't want to do that. You might not get there. You might get to there and be miserable if you haven't really checked out their program. And then, then it's about the experience again. You're back to going, what have I done? You know, what, why did I, why did I pay attention to this or look this up? You're going to get a different experience depending on what's going to fit for you. You're going to need to know that.